diving right into it. We are going into chapter one right now. And chapter one is all about cell structure. Now, before we talk about cell structure, we are going to have to talk a little bit about something called cell microscopy. The word microscopy just basically implies that we are going to be using an apparatus called the microscope. All right. When we are talking about a microscope, okay, so what's the purpose of a microscope? We kind of know that the school has a microscope called the light microscope. And the microscope's main function is just basically to magnify a specimen. To magnify a specimen size. And when we are talking about the specimen size, okay, it's not the actual specimen size, by the way. We are not, it's not like a, a, a weird uh, sci-fi sci ray gun to kind of enlarge the size of the actual specimen. However, it is to magnify, or the key word here is basically magnification. We have to understand what the word magnification is, and magnification is basically to enlarge the image size of a specimen, all right? So in our eyes, if we are looking at a particular specimen, and let's say that's the actual size of a specimen, that red dot, okay? The actual size over there. Uh, what happens is when we look at it, okay, our brain will basically register a slightly bigger size, okay, basically. So this is what's supposed to happen over here. And in this case, what we register is the image size. But how does this happen? How does this size over here become this one over here? That process, okay, in between is called magnification. And for magnification to happen, uh, you can either use a light microscope or you can use an electron microscope. So let's keep it very simple. Let's talk about the light microscope first. Okay, so for the light microscope, I'm not going to do the exact uh, structure of the light microscope. I mean, that's not so important. What we have to know is we have to kind of understand the fundamentals first. The fundamentals are as follows. When, when I say fundamentals, I mean the basics. We kind of have to know how a microscope works. Imagine if you just have an object over here. This is just basically the specimen, be it a cell, whatever you're looking at it under the microscope. If you want to be able to look at a specimen, you have to understand how are we able to see something if this is our eye. You are only able to see something if light was to hit the specimen, so that's light over there, light is able to hit the specimen, and the specimen must be able to reflect the light into your eyes. Then your photoreceptors in your eye detect the light, it sends an impulse to your brain, and your brain goes, hmm, I'm able to see the specimen, basically. That's what's supposed to happen. But let's talk about what if the light was, um, let's say the object is like a transparent object. If it's a transparent object, the light will just basically pass through. And in that kind of situation, the light will not be reflected and we will not be able to see anything at all. That's what's supposed to happen. So the first fundamental thing that you have to understand is if you want to be able to see something, if you want to be able to see something, the specimen interrupts the light and reflects the light into our eyes. That's the first thing we must understand. So only when the light hits the specimen and the light is reflected into our eyes, we are able to see it. Fine. Now what's the big deal? Where does magnification come in? Magnification comes in when you kind of put a lens over here. Now when you put a lens over here, what actually happens is it will go through the lens, and in this situation over here, when it enters our eyes, our eyes will comprehend the specimen to be larger than it actually is. This over here is the process of magnification. So this is the actual size of the specimen over here, and this is the image size. Pretty simple. Fine. Now, and 
if we were to look at the actual size over here, if we were to make it bigger, and this is the image size over here, this is just the act of magnifying it, okay? Magnification equals, you multiply the actual size and you will actually get the image size over here. So that's how they get the formula. The formula equals to actual times magnification equals to image. Or you can also just rearrange it where you can put magnification equals to image over actual. That's how the formula comes to be. So let's try a basic example. The basic example is as such. If you have an actual size of a cell, which is about, for example, 10 micrometer, and based on the magnification of the cell, we ascertained the diameter of the cell was, when we looked at it under the microscope, it was 10 millimeters. So in this case, they asked you to calculate, for example, in the exam, what is the magnification, basically. MAG is magnification. Okay, I, I'm just writing it like that. So magnification equals to image over actual. And magnification equals to 10 millimeters, which is the one that you are looking at under the microscope. Okay, what you are looking at, what you see. And 10 micrometer is the actual size. Now, a lot of students, not a lot of students, okay, that's that's a bit of an unfair statement to make, but a few students have a tendency to just divide 10 millimeters to 10 micrometers and they'll get the answer one, and that is wrong, okay. In maths, the units for the numerator and the denominator, they have to be similar. So you'll have to convert millimeter to micrometer, and to convert millimeter to micrometer, you can just basically multiply it by a thousand right? And in this case, it will be 10,000 micrometers divided by 10 micrometers. And the answer in this case will be a thousand. That is the magnification right here. Okay. It's quite straightforward. And of course, the basic units that you'll have to know, the units in magnification Uh, rarely do we use centimeters, but on the off chance it might come out. We have millimeters, we have micrometer. I'm not best at writing micrometer over there, <laughs> okay? And we also have a new one. In IGCSE, you only had to learn these three uh, scales, but you also have to introduce a new one, nanometer, because we are going to be talking about organelles, and organelles, some organelles fall under the scale of nanometers, okay? Conversion of centimeters to millimeters is multiplied by 10, millimeters to micrometers multiplied by 1,000. Some books will put it as 10 to the power of 3, this to this, micrometer to nanometer, again, multiply 10 to the power, uh, power of 3 or 1,000. And nanometer to micrometer, it's the opposite. You just divide it then. Divide 1,000, divide 1,000 over here. The, that's a comma, by the way. That's not a decimal place. Yeah, it's a separator, all right? And this one is divided by 10, okay? So these are the units that you'll have to know, and you'll have to be able to convert the um units effortlessly in the exam all right if they give you like for example three millimeters okay three millimeters and they ask you to convert it into let's say micrometer so micrometer in this case will be three millimeters times a thousand and therefore it, it is equivalent to three thousand micrometers. Some students do ask, do I have to put the separator in the exam? No, you don't have to. It's just a habit. Um, if you just basically want to write as 3000 micrometer, go ahead. No problems over that. And if they do ask you to convert it into nanometer, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to do 3 multiply by 1000, multiply by another 1000. And in this case, it will be 3 million nanometers. So the conversion is something that we must be well versed with. 
that is just basically what magnification is all about. Magnification is just taking the actual specimen. This is the actual specimen and we magnify it using the lenses in the microscope so that when we view it under the microscope, what we are looking at is an enlarged image of the specimen. That is just what magnification is all about. Pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And the most important thing to also take away from this is if you want to be able to see something, if you want to be able to see something, it must have the capability of interrupting the light and reflecting the light. This will be important for later. And once it interrupts and reflects the light, it will then enter our eyes and therefore we are able to comprehend the image. That's how we look at it. That's how we look at things on a daily basis. So for the next video, what we are going to be looking at is we are going to be seeing the wavelengths of a light microscope.